Welcome to Something More. I'm your host, Bob Duvall, and I'm here today with Isaiah Saldivar. Now, Isaiah has his own ministry. He's a live streamer. He has his own YouTube channel that at the time of this interview just hit 100,000 subscribers. Yes, yes. Congratulations so on that. Thank you. So, Isaiah, I want to find out how to see in the unseen realm, how to see in the spirit. Why? Why do I want to see in the spirit? Yeah. Isaiah, that's a scary place. I, you know, I may just want to walk around like this. Why is it important? Yeah, so it? there, there's an invisible war going on right now, whether no matter who's watching, whether you're a believer or an unbeliever, you're in the middle of a war. There's God and there's the kingdom of darkness constantly at war, and we're right there in the middle. And one of the most dangerous places you can possibly be is to be in the war and not be aware of it, to not know these invisible enemies that are fighting you. And that's where a lot of people live. They live, in, they live their life not aware, ignorant, the Bible calls, to the vice of the enemy. And Paul says, do not be ignorant to Satan's devices, to be aware. So how could I be aware of something that I can't see with my physical eyes? How could I be aware of something in a realm that I have no access to in the sensory, sensory world, right, with our touch and our sight? So it's very important as believers, we know what's going on in the spirit. Jesus told Nicodemus, you must be born again. And Nicodemus goes, well, how could I go back in my mom and be born? And Jesus is going, Nicodemus, we're not talking about the natural realm. We're talking about being born in the spirit realm. So as believers, we are born, when we're born again, we're not just born again into the natural Natural, we are born again into the spirit realm. And so being born in that realm, that's where we live now. Second Corinthians 4.18, Paul says, we live by not what we see, but we live on the unseen. That's what we need to focus on. So it's very important that we could see, we can sense, and we can tell what's going on in the spiritual realm. So we can ignore it, but to our own peril. Absolutely, really. yeah. So uh, Isaiah, let's back up just a bit. Uh, because, uh, and let's talk about when you were 19, you were an atheist. I was an atheist, yes. You were kind of a party animal into drinking and so on. And you had a sister who kept bugging you to go to church and you wanted to get her off your back. Yeah. So you... One, just one time, you're going to go to church. What happened when you went? Yeah, so my sister bugged me. It was about six months of her just on me nonstop. So I told my girlfriend at the time that I planned to marry. I said, look, let's just go to get her off her back for her to stop bugging us. So I remember this. I'll never forget walking into that church after being raised in church. I stopped going at 16, became a self-proclaimed atheist. I don't believe in God. God's not real. Never saw the power of God. Never saw the move of God. And so at 19, I had not been in church in now, obviously, three years. And I said, I'm just going to go to get her off my back. And I remember stepping foot in that door. I said something to myself walking through. I said, this will be the last time I ever step foot into church, which I, I laugh now 10 years later. I said, this will be the last time I step foot in. I remember sitting there. I was sitting in the back where you're not supposed to sit. It was a large church and they kind of like rope it off. And I was making fun and I was making jokes. And during that service, I just felt something drawing me, something pulling me. And during the altar call, I literally felt as if someone was pulling my shirt. Now, of course, it wasn't in the natural, but back then I didn't have words for it. I just felt something. Here I am an atheist. I'm making fun. I'm joking. I don't believe in God and I'm feeling something pull my shirt. So I went forward to that altar and all the religious people listening right now just have to cover their ears here because I basically <laughs> said, God, I don't effing believe in you. I mean, I was at the altar. You didn't were know, honest. I was honest. I said, yeah. I don't effing believe in you. I said, but if you're real, and this is what I want people to notice. I said, I will. And this was in my heart of hearts on the inside of me. I said, I will give you everything. And in that moment, I'm at the altar. I haven't cried in 10 years. I'm hard hearted. I'm angry. I'm bitter. I'm everything you can think of. And the audible voice. Now we're not talking about a small voice, an inward Holy Spirit whispering. I'm talking about the audible. Now I'm an atheist a second ago. <laughs> the audible voice of God said, Isaiah, which already shocked me, 7 billion people and he knows my name, said, Isaiah, and this is what he said to me, I don't want 99.9% .9 of you. I want everything. I want all of you. And this is the thing I just got done telling him that if he was real and would show himself, I would be a willing vessel to do anything for him. And he said, I want 99, I don't want 99.9% .9 of you. I want everything. I'm going to use you to preach the gospel to all nations started showing. And in that moment, I don't know if it was a trance, a vision. I was just somewhere else. I was seeing bright lights. I was in another world. I started crying for the first time in 10 years. I'm sobbing uncontrollably. And I'm just having this radical encounter with the God of the universe, the God that five seconds ago I'm cussing at and don't believe in. And it just reminds me of the Bible says, 
He proved his love for us that while we were sinners, Christ died. That's how God proves his love. So I had this encounter with God. I mean, scales are coming off my eyes. I'm crying. I'm just having this radical. I'm seeing me preach to other nations. God's giving me, I'm going to have, there's going to be a revival. You're going to do this and showing me what I'm doing now, Bob, 10 years later, I saw 10 years ago in a vision at that altar. So I'm now next to my girlfriend. I start speaking in tongues. Now, mind you, I've only (laughs) heard tongues one time in my life as a kid. My parents had prayed in tongues. So I've never heard tongues other than one time as a kid. Mm. I'm speaking in this language that I've never heard before and not even knowing what I'm doing. And I'm trying to cover my mouth because my girlfriend's now next to me. I don't want her to hear me. I don't want no one to hear me. I don't know what I'm doing. And I can't control the tongues. The Holy Spirit fills me speaking out of me. No one's laying hands on me. I'm just having this radical encounter. I'm crying. And God really marked me that day, opened up my eyes to the spiritual realm, began to show me things in the spirit to the point of where when the service got over, I didn't recognize anybody. I didn't Mm. recognize color. I mean, you talk about born again. Mm-hmm. I was born again that night. I was so radically changed. I say atheist to revivalist in one second. That's all God needs is one second. And God really marked me that night, radically changed me from being that's, an atheist. That's to incredible. Where I'm I mean, at. you you literally were like up for the next three nights. I mean, you didn't yeah. eat for the next two weeks. Yeah. Uh, you just took off. You started a prayer meeting in your home, like yeah. maybe a couple of days later. But uh, you were going to college, finishing up school yes. at the time. So you went back to class the next day and you started seeing things in the spirit. Tell me about that. Yeah, so I get in my car. I'll never forget this. I'm driving to college. I maybe only shared this once before. I pull over on the side of the road and I'm just crying. And mind you, I was so hard hearted. I, I didn't know how to even show emotion. Just think about how Bible says God will take your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. I'm crying on the side of the road because I'm thinking I'm seeing the sun for the first time. I'm seeing grass for the first time. I mean, I'm so born again that everything's different now. And so I'm crying on the side of the road. And then I'm thinking, why am I crying? I'm, I'm supposed to be this tough guy. I have this nice car. It's all, you know, lowered and has rich. <laughs> and I have big subwoofers. So I get to college. I'll never forget it. Getting, out of the, getting out of my car and I start walking around my campus. Not only am I hearing words of knowledge and I'm hearing, I, I, don't, I don't know. I just know I'm hearing people's thoughts. At the time, I didn't know it was a word of knowledge. I just thought, what happened to me last night? Something crazy happened to me. And I'm seeing angels and demons over people's heads. I'm seeing angels and demons in my college campus. I'm sitting in class. And mind you, I'm a straight A student. Just never got to be in college straight A's. I'm sitting in my college class, seeing the invisible realm, seeing a war going on here hearing thoughts. And I'm like, I told my professor, I got to go. And I've never left class. I was a teacher's pet. I mean, I was sitting front row. I was that guy. But you must have been freaking out. Oh, I was totally freaking out. I didn't know what was going on with me. I said, there's something going on. I don't know what this is. Is this God? Is it? Because I, in my, in my church life, growing up in church, I didn't get taught about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. I didn't know first Corinthians 12. So I didn't know this was a supernatural gift of discerning of spirits where God was opening up my eyes to the spirit realm. So mind you now, I was an atheist last night. Now I'm like seeing all these things. So I remember I left college. I went home and I just said, what is this God? I'm seeing stuff everywhere. My family, my friends, I'm literally seeing the unseen realm. Now it wasn't that something new was happening. It was that I was now aware of what was already happening because a week ago in college, this was still going on. I just (laughs) couldn't see it. So that's the crazy part about when believers start activating their spiritual senses, start seeing that discerning a spirit's gift activating their life. They start seeing things in their marriage, in their family, with their kids. And it goes back to what we started talking about of how important it is. You start seeing things you didn't know were there and you're able to war more effectively because the Bible says our battles in the spirit realm. We don't battle against flesh and blood. We battle against spiritual powers and principalities, rulers of darkness, spiritual hosts of wickedness. So we're battling the unseen realm every single day. Our weapons are not carnal, the Bible says, but they're mighty through God for the pulling down of strongholds. So we do have this spiritual life that we have to get involved in as believers. We can't ignore it. We can't just put our head in the sand and say it's not real. It's very real. It's very active. And God wants everybody to, to see in this realm. But Isaiah, let's be real. Most Christians don't see in the spirit. It's true. Most don't operate in this gift. Why not? Why can't, why can't they see in the spirit? So I think there's two major reasons. One is we are so distracted. People wonder why is it the enemy so wants us glued on our phone? I mean, the average person spends four to eight hours a day, Bob, on their phone. I mean, we are all glued to Facebook and Instagram yeah, and Netflix absolutely. and Hulu and YouTube yes. and TikTok. I mean, everything. So if he has your head down, let's say four hours a day, the unseen realm is not below you. The unseen realm is above you. It's in the heavenly dimension. It's, it's around us. So if your head's down all the time, it's no 
wonder we don't see in the spirit. We're ignorant. So this is a plan of the enemy. Now, it might not be that you're watching bad stuff online or you're on the bad things. You might be even watching Christian content, but because we're spending so many hours, the enemy has us distracted. It's really dulled our spiritual senses. It's really shut down our spiritual eyes. Number two is pornography, is sexual sin, compromise, shame, and guilt. If you look at the statistics of Christians that are involved in pornography, internet pornography, and let's not even say pornography, let's just say the movies we watch now that are full of compromise and adultery, that we laugh at, we have no shame watching, these things shut down our eyes spiritually. That shame and that guilt, it puts the scales on our eyes to where we're not able to see in the spirit realm. So a lot of believers are stuck in distraction and they're stuck in shame and guilt. So really they're not able to see in the spirit realm to the level that God wants them to see. And maybe they'll get a glimpse, they'll say, oh, when I was 13, I saw an angel, or when I was 20, but God wants us to see and activate this. And I wanted to touch on what you said because I was very overwhelmed. I was, I couldn't turn it off. I was just all day, all night. This is the reason why I didn't sleep for three days. I mean, it got so bad to where my family said, this is unhealthy, you need to go to sleep. And I told God, I said, God, would you take this from me and show me how to use it? So God really shut the gift down and then began to show me how to activate it by faith, how to use it in deliverance, how to use it when praying for miracles, how to use it when praying for my marriage. And God really started showing me how to really use the gift properly. So really it's it's not to a gift of seeing in the spirit. What is the gift? So the gift is discerning of spirits, distinguishing okay. of spirits. So people say, well, where's the gift of seeing in the spirit? It's <laughs> not, it's not in the Bible. It's first Corinthians 12. The gift is discerning of spirits. So in the gift of discerning of spirits is the ability to see in the spirit. And that also includes our other four spiritual senses. We'll, we're going to talk about later. So I would say it's absolutely the gift of discerning of spirits. And we're not talking natural, Bob. We're not talking natural discernment. We're not talking about, oh, I see this because I saw this, or we're talking about a spiritual ability, a spiritual gift that Paul tells us about to distinguish spirits, whether it be an angelic spirit, whether it be the Holy Spirit, whether it be a demonic spirit, or whether it be the soul, the flesh. So those are the four main realms that we discern. Most people don't realize how important it is to discern what the Holy Spirit's doing. And that the way we discern what he's doing is by also the discerning spirit. Very powerful gift, but to see in the spirit is part of that gift. Okay, Isaiah, we're going to take a quick break. And so when we come back, you're going to find out about how to do it. And Isaiah is going to pray a prayer of activation over you. Come back in just a moment. Call now and get Isaiah Saldivar's anointed and exclusive four-part audio CD teaching series, Be Empowered. It's exclusive for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $29. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 3687. You will walk in the divine power of God. You'll walk in the supernatural and it will become normal for you to see demons cast out. It will become normal for you to see the sick healed. It will become normal for you to see someone die and say, I'm going to go pray and believe God to raise them from the dead. Through Isaiah Saldivar's exclusive and anointed four-part audio CD teaching series, Be Empowered, you will be equipped to violently assault the gates of hell. Be given the keys to walking every day in the kingdom of God, which most of the church have not been using. Learn how to cast out a demon. Learn the answer to the following questions. What are the steps to casting out a demon? How do I heal the sick? How do I raise the dead? How do I walk in the gifts of the Holy Spirit and the power of God? Isaiah includes powerful anointed prayers for you throughout the teaching series. A prayer to break the spirit of fear off of you. A prayer to break the power of unbelief. A prayer to break any legal ties with the enemy. A prayer to break demonic strongholds that are stopping miracles from happening in your life. A prayer to break every assignment and strategy of the enemy over you now. Isaiah also releases the fire of God over you and activates the gifts of the Spirit over your life. One of the reasons why I see people afraid of demons is they're not trained or properly equipped to deal with demons. As you get trained in these teachings, you're going to lose any fear that you have, any ambiguity or any fear that you might have or mystery with the supernatural or the demonic realm. Be equipped to advance the kingdom of God through the supernatural weapons of warfare. This is exclusive with us, but we have it for you. It's time for you to be empowered. Don't miss out on getting Isaiah Saldivar's anointed and exclusive four-part audio CD teaching series, Be Empowered. It's exclusive for our It's Supernatural audience. Yours for a donation of $29. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 3687 or get it as a digital download by going to sidroth.org slash D3687. 
Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural. P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 3687 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. Welcome back to Something More. I'm your host, Bob Duvall, here with Isaiah Saldivar. And Isaiah says the number one thing lacking in the body of Messiah today is discernment. How? How do, how do I begin to see in the unseen realm? How do I activate this gift? Yeah, so the gift is activated by faith, but one thing I wanna say about that is very important. Many people want the gifts, so they wanna pursue the gifts, the First Corinthians 12, but they don't need the gifts. And so I tell people all the time, the gifts of the Spirit are not toys, they're tools. So they're not for glamor, for show, to have a following, to be on stage and look great, doing words and knowledge of prophecy. And there's a place for that, but they're actually tools to advance the kingdom of God. So I tell people, this. If you're asking for the gifts, if you want to see in the Spirit, if you want to hear in the Spirit, you want to activate your spiritual senses, you need to also ask, what am I doing to position myself in a place where I actually need the gifts? Because what God does is God released the gifts based on need. He's not just going to give you, you're not going to be sitting on the Good couch point. watching Netflix and right. then start seeing angels and demons because there's no point to that. Mm. But when you're out evangelizing, when you're sharing your faith, when you say, okay, Lord, I'm going to lock in in the secret place and pray for someone, would you show me what's going on with them or what I can pray for, what spirits might be attacking them, that's when you put yourself in position to activate the gift. Mm. So God wants us to activate the gift, but God also wants us to be in a place to exercise the gift. So what I try to do when I'm exercising the gift is put myself in a position to actually use the gift. Let me just give you a testimony from a few weeks ago. I was preaching at a church out in North Carolina, and I'm on the, on the stage on the altar, and I said, okay, Lord, I'm by faith. I want to activate this gift. I want to see in the Spirit. I want to activate. And all of a sudden, Bob, I'm walking around looking at people at the altar, oh, just available for what the Holy Spirit wants to do. And all of a sudden I see a young man kneeling down at the altar like this with his head down and I see a dark figure over him, like a dark cloud. I knew it was a demon, but it didn't look like you think. So, were, okay, were you seeing it, seeing it? I was, or, I was like seeing, in the natural, were you I was seeing something? So it was, it was superimposing itself over the natural. Okay. So it was almost like the natural realm and then something over the natural realm. So I knew it was in the spirit, but I knew it was something demonic because it was like a dark cloud. I don't want to say it was like a demon with claws like you think. Right. It was a darkness over him, like a dark figure, a dark cloud. So I knew there was a demon. I discerned with the discerning of spirits, saw it in the spirit, discerned it was a demonic spirit over this young man's life. So I went up to the young man. I didn't ask him, do you need this? What is it? Because I already discerned what it was. I immediately said this. Satan, he is not your home. I bind this unclean spirit. You must leave this young man. He's a temple of the Holy Spirit. I started praying the fire of God over him. I command the spirit to leave. He immediately starts screaming, no, he's mine. What do you want from him? Immediately. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have this video on my web, on my pages. He's screaming, growling, shaking. What is your name? My name is Legion. I mean, the spirit full on manifests. Wow. Well, I found out, I get back to my hotel the night. The guy gets fully delivered. I get back to my hotel. I found out it was a young man that's been following. And I've been messaging this guy on Instagram for months, not knowing it was him and he got fully delivered. I still talk to him this day. I just talked to him two days ago. God completely delivered him. But I will say, I would have never known that. I would have never known he needed freedom or deliverance. It was through the seeing in the spirit I was able to do that. Mm. Okay, so as we alluded to before, it's not just seeing in the spirit. There's the five different senses like we have in the natural, yeah. we have in the spirit. So let's start with sight. Yeah. And one of my favorite stories for that one is in 2 Kings 6 with Elisha and his servant. Tell me. Yeah, that. absolutely. So Elisha's about to get killed. There's a king after him. We kind of, many of us know story, the king wants to kill Elisha. And Elisha, I like to picture it this way. Of course, I'm paraphrasing. Elisha wakes up, he's eating breakfast. His servant looks out the window, sees an army all around him and is panicking. And Elisha's not panicking. And the servant's going, Elisha, there's people around us. Why are you not panicking? Why are you not freaking out? In Elisha's mind, Elisha's not freaking out because he's seeing something the servant is not seeing. And the servant's not seeing chariots of fire all around the army. Uh, that's going around. So here's Elisha's prayer. Elisha prays, Lord, open up his eyes. Now I want you to notice what Elisha says. He doesn't say, Lord, give him spiritual eyes. Right. And maybe the viewers are listening going, and even in this time, they're saying, Lord, give me eyes, give me eyes. You don't need to pray for eyes because we all have five, five spiritual senses. We need to pray that God would open them, that God would activate them. It's like the gifts of the Holy Spirit. If you have the Holy Spirit, all the gifts are in you. You just have to pray that they would be activated. And that's why Paul said it's the same spirit that gives out and distributes the gifts. So he prays that God would open their eyes. Now, when he prays for that young man, that young 
man begins to see why Elisha is not panicking. And the reason being is although they are surrounded by the enemy, the enemies are surrounded by God. And I've noticed in my life, Bob, there are situations where I'm freaking out, I'm panicking, but then I start seeing in the unseen realm, I see that I have backup, that God has sent angels of warfare to back me up, and I'm not panicking because I know that God has my back in the unseen realm. So it's, it's a very good point to make that we all have spiritual eyes, we just need to pray that they would be opened. The, also, you talk about how the eye is the window to the soul. Yeah. Talk about that. Yeah, the Bible says if your eye is good, your whole body is good. The eye is truly the window to the body, the Bible describes. And so we have to be very careful, again, on social media. What are we letting in our window? People don't realize entertainment and movies are a big open door to the demonic realm. They say, well, how could a demon come into me through watching something? Because they come in through the eye. The enemy's always looking how to get in. Jesus calls us spiritual houses. We know this because he says when a demon leaves, he says, I'm going to go back to my home. So we are houses. Now, we can be houses for the Holy Spirit or we can be houses for demonic spirits. And one way I see demons get in when I'm doing deliverance on people is through the eye gate. We need to be very careful what we're letting in through our eyes, what we're watching. It's no game. It's no joke. It's, oh, it's not not that big of a deal. It is a big deal. What we're watching on social media is a very big deal. So I would challenge the listeners like the eye is the window. And that's why when I prophesy over people, when I'm praying deliverance, even when I'm casting demons out, I look people right in the eye and I can see in their eyes, darkness around their eyes, or I can see light in their eyes. I'm able to use that gift as well to see through the eyes because the eye is the window into the soul. Okay. Taste. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Spiritual taste? Yeah, some people might say, well, is there, and that's the important thing when we talk about discerning of spirits. We have five natural senses, which help us discern what's going right. on in the natural realm. No one listening would argue that. Oh yeah, I could taste, I can see, I can. Sure. But we also, so how do we relate to the spiritual realm if we use senses to relate to the natural realm? through discerning of spirits. So taste is a big one. If you look at Ezekiel, God had him eat a scroll. Well, it wasn't a natural scroll, it was a spiritual scroll. And he said it tasted like honey. So many times you might get a taste in your mouth. Sometimes, Bob, I'm laying hands on people and I start getting a very bad taste in my mouth, a very nasty taste, a bitter taste. And that's one way I'm discerning, again, a demonic spirit. Discerning of spirits is very powerful in deliverance ministry. So one of the things that I flow in is through that gift, through that ministry. So yeah, bad taste could be a demonic spirit. A good taste could be the Holy Spirit spirit moving. People say, I taste something sweet at the altar. That's a sign of the spirit of God moving, the Holy Spirit moving. Okay. I think kind of related to that is smell. Yeah. Spiritual smell. Yeah, absolutely. So, so the Bible says that God spreads his knowledge through the fragrance of his knowledge through the, through his people. So God uses us to spread the fragrance of his knowledge throughout the earth. And um, smell is a big one as well. You might smell something. You might smell something bitter, something nasty. You might smell something sweet. So a lot of times the smell could relate to the move of God and the Bible talks about when the woman broke her alabaster box, I'm thinking about, and there was an aroma, right, with the perfume. Our sacrifice has a smell. I tell believers, are you spiritually stinky? Like, does your life stink to God or to other people? And there's some of those people you just you just can't like to be around, or the, even the world doesn't want to be around them, and that could be because they spiritually smell because there's no sacrifice in their life. So when you sacrifice to God, people know. People can tell in the spirit there's an aroma when we sacrifice and give things and lay down our life to God. Touch. Now, I, you know, I think of the woman with the issue of blood yeah. who pressed in and touched the fringes of Jesus' garment. Talk I love this because there's all these people crowding around Jesus, pressing in, and here's Jesus' question, who's touching me? And the disciples are going, Jesus, Messiah, everybody's touching you. There's a crowd around you. Jesus goes, no, I felt somebody pull power from me. That's what the Bible translation says. Somebody pulled on me, something Jesus was talking about, not just in the natural, and of course she did touch the hem of his garment in the natural, but she was also touching him spiritually. In the spirit realm, she was pulling on heaven. And Bob, isn't this what we do in prayer when we're praying, we're pulling on God, we're reaching for God, hanging on. There's some moments, Bob, where I'm this and I have this going on and this going on. It feels like all hell is breaking out and I get in my secret place and I just grab onto the hem of his garment. Well, I'm not grabbing on physically to Jesus. Right. I'm grabbing on spiritually. So I challenge believers in the spirit. Sometimes you got to grab on to what God is doing. If God is moving, you hang on and go with what God is doing. So definitely grabbing on and touch. There's definitely an element of touch in the spirit realm. Even when the, in the angelic, when I'm in deliverance and there's angels in deliverance. I'm like, oh, you know, I want to film. I can't <laughs> film in the natural. Right. But there's, a, there's, a, there's a touch in the spirit. I've felt times where you feel the wind of an angel yeah. moving, and the Bible says angels are the winds of God. And so definitely there's an element to touch there. Okay.
Okay, the fifth one, hearing. So do you hear things in the spirit? Like yeah. when you do deliverance and so on? What, what yeah, do you hear? so I'll hear in the spirit chains breaking, I'll hear screams, I'll hear names. There's times where I'll literally be casting demons out of people and I'll hear as if I'm talking to you the names of the demons. So be, I don't have to even say, what's your name and why aren't you leaving? Because I'll literally hear in the spirit realm the names of the demons. Let me just share one testimony. One time I was in a prayer meeting and I heard a loud trumpet in the prayer meeting. I'm talking, when I say loud trumpet, I'm talking like, who played that? We were in a room about 80 people and there's music playing. I got on the stage. I said, did everybody hear? Everyone in the room heard a trumpet. You weren't the only one. I wasn't heard. the only one. Okay. We all heard the trumpet. Wow. So I really did kind of like freak out about it. Cause I'm saying, I just heard a trumpet. I mean, is Jesus coming back? What's going on? I'm hearing a trumpet. So I, I say, okay, there's something to this. Now I went to the sound booth. I said, was there any, I made sure the track we were playing, there was no trumpet. Cause I wanted to make sure I'm like, I'm one of those guys. I wanted to be real. I don't want to yeah. say, oh, there's a trumpet. And it was in the, it was in the music. So I said, no, okay. It wasn't in the track. I went through all the music. Okay. It wasn't the song we were playing. That night, I text about 10 to 15 pastor friends of mine that are in the area. I said, guys, we had a prayer meeting corporate with my team. We heard trumpets. Did anybody else by chance? About four or five out of those 10 to 15 I text said, we all heard trumpets, the same thing the same night. So we got those four or five churches that heard trumpets. We started this prayer gathering called Confluence, where we all came together for revival meetings based on the fact, the sound of the trumpet, Joel 2, blow the trumpet in Zion, sound the alarm, call the people. God was bringing revival to our area. And we had about five, some of the most powerful prayer meetings, revival meetings ever based on all five of us pastors hearing that trumpet. So that was a very, that very marked me. It was very significant, the sound of the trumpet. So these are different sounds you might hear in the spirit. Again, one of the major ones I hear when God wants to do deliverance in a church or an altar is I'll hear chains breaking. I'll literally hear it in the spirit. Mm -hmm. And God says, okay, it's time to move in deliverance. Okay, Isaiah, the viewer watching right now, hopefully they're like on the edge yeah, of their seat yeah, yeah. and they're ready. Take a minute or so and pray a prayer of activation over yeah. that viewer. So I want to pray over every single person watching. I know God wants you to have this gift. The Bible says to earnestly desire and pursue the, the spiritual gifts, 1 Corinthians 12. So we're going to pray this quick prayer of activation. Just close your eyes. Father, we pray right now by your Holy Spirit's power in the name of Jesus that you would open up the eyes of our understanding, that you would open up the eyes, enlighten our eyes, open them up in Jesus' name. I speak over every person watching that your eyes would be open opened in Jesus' name. We say spiritual senses come alive in Jesus' name. Father, we ask that you would activate the discerning of spirits gift in the name of Jesus over every person listening, over every person watching. I pray that the Lord would open up doors. I pray he would put you in situations where you need to exercise this gift. Father, we thank you that right now in your church, that you're opening up the eyes of the church, that we are not going to be blind any longer, that we are not going to be ignorant. In the book of Revelation, it says that anointing your eyes with eye self. So I pray the anointing over your eyes. I pray eyes to see. I pray ears to hear. I pray that you would have a mouth to speak the word of God. I pray spiritual touch would be activated. Spiritual smell would be activated. Spiritual sight. We just pray the five spiritual senses would be activated in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. It's more important now than ever for you to operate in this gift of discernment. So I hope that you have prayed along with Isaiah and pursue the gifts, pursue the gift of discernment, of seeing in the spirit, of activating all of these senses. Just activate it by faith, continue to go after it and join us again next time for something more.